Hello and welcome to our presentation today on Portfolios Come Full Circle in the World of Work. We are Janine Quitting, who is unfortunately not here today, um, Miriam Laidlaw and Tabitha Parker, whom you can see on the screen, um, conferencing in from Aotearoa, New Zealand, and me, Christina Hopner from Catalyst. Janine, Miriam and Tabitha work at Waitemata District Health Board in Auckland, which is the biggest district health board in New Zealand. We've come together because we've um, all four worked together on a project implementing electronic portfolios at White Mata. And that is the story that we are wanting to talk about today. Here at ABLE, we typically look at the creation of portfolios by students at the higher education level and further education level. Um, however, in this case, um, we want to take a look at what portfolios can look like when they are in the world of work. So once students graduate and then enter their employment. And that is why we are looking at how portfolios can come full circle because in New Zealand um, a lot of students start out with portfolios when they are at university oftentimes also already before at um, the high school or primary school level and then can continue in their workplace which is in particular the here the example with nursing portfolios and so this is where we would like to show you what is possible when portfolios are taken out of the university context and what they can then look like in the world of work. The Health Practitioners Competency Assurance Act of 2003 requires the Nursing Council of New Zealand to ensure the ongoing competence of practitioners. The Act protects the health and safety of members of the public. All health practitioners must be competent and fit to practice in their profession. In the 1980s, Jocelyn Peach, the Director of Nursing at Waitemata District Health Board, began working on recognising professional competence of nurses and used Patricia Benner's framework of 1984, looking at progression of student nurse to expert nurse, using a novice to expert continuum. In the 1990s, clinical career pathways were introduced and then the Nursing Council introduced portfolios in 2004 as part of their Professional Development and Recognition Programme. Waitemata District Health Board were early adopters of this approach. In the uh, current or just previous world, I should say, um, we had portfolio cupboards. We do still have them, we're transitioning, but um, they um, there was a cupboard in an office dedicated to binders full of portfolios um, under lock. And um, uh, nurses would deliver their portfolios to these cupboards. Yep. Yep. So we had them at each hospital and at, and at our satellite sites. And then an administrator would drive around trying to pick up, uh, to, she'd take a big trolley with wheels and she'd go and pick up all these heavy trolleys, uh, heavy portfolios. Yeah. And, um, and she'd have to bring them back and do all sorts of stuff with them and people would have to come and collect them and then bring them back and then she would have to bring them back to whichever site she picked them up from where the nurses would have to come and collect them. So it was a bit of an arduous process. And as you can see from the portfolio cupboard, um, the portfolios were also um, of varying size. So there was little in the way of consistency with um, how much people put into their portfolios. Making assessors' jobs particularly difficult. So it was time for change. <clears throat> so uh, the director of nursing decided she was ready in 2011 and they started to ask questions about how do you do e-portfolios? What are e-portfolios? We joined in 2017 the e-portfolio the e discussion and went, okay, let's stop talking, let's do. Yeah. So if, if you're looking at the implementation timeline right now, um, you can see that in December 2017, uh, we confirmed that we start using Mahara. Mm -hmm. We'd previously can canvassed other possible uh, applications, but our background um, work where we looked at what the other DHBs were doing and we looked at what we, we were using in 
uh, our tertiary sector. We uh, were familiar with Mahara from our, our work in tertiary and the other DHBs have also chosen Mahara. And what would integrate with our learning existing learning management system the best, which was Mahara? So we engaged with uh, Catalyst and started to do some scoping in the first half of the year. By July, we had a contract signed <coughs> and from there we gave two months to Catalyst to <laughs> develop pretty much the whole, the whole, uh, the All whole the customizations <laughs> that we needed um, and everything like that. Um, because then we were running our pilot group and um, we were still developing while the pilot group was running. Um, yeah. So we'd scoped out some significant pieces of work that would help with workflow. We really wanted to address some of the issues that we that we had uh, in the paper process. And that scoping workshop really helped to make sure we were customizing to meet those those needs. And our pilot was time bound because we were using a group of new graduates mm -hmm. who needed to be ready for um, to submit before their graduation in December. So we needed to allow time for um, submission and marking as well as uh, their actual work in developing their portfolio. Yeah. So, so it was quite fast. Um, and then you'll see that uh, we, we tried to do our review in, De in December yeah. and evaluate in January to be ready for a full rollout um, once that was confirmed. Yeah. So we were, we were under a little bit of time pressure to make sure that everything was done on time um, and that we um, got this as um, rollout ready as possible before we started. Yep, and you can see in May that we uh, started to include our external parties as well that work with our DHB, our community providers. Over to Christina. And um the platform that uh, Vitamata DHB uses is Kopakiti Akihora um, Healthcare Portfolio. And we set up the platform not just for um, the DHB, because it was important that nurses can keep their portfolio also if they move to another district health board, if they're moving um, to another part of the country. Um, because apparently nurses in New Zealand do move quite a bit around and therefore it would not really have benefited them if they were stuck in a particular platform and couldn't take their portfolio with. And so what um, had been decided is that they can eventually all be on the healthcare portfolio which is set up for all of New Zealand and any healthcare professional can then join um, through their district health boards and their portfolio always stays in place even when they move organizations. So we wanted to share some of the screenshots that help explain what some of the custom work that we wanted done. One of the problems that we had was that you're giving your staff um, guides, guides to completing something, and they're then going off and looking for those guides and trying to make sure they're looking on the right page and uh, for the right level and finding the information they need. So we said we would like our, our nurses to be presented their instructions where they need them in the page. So we made templates and we asked Catalyst to add an instruction area where we could write notes into the page. And this is because um, we, we did look at um, just putting the instructions as a text block on the page that had, here's your instructions, this is what you do, and when you're done, delete this block. And that was always going to be fraught with errors where people would delete the block before they'd finished reading the instructions and then be like, oh, have I done everything? I've forgotten, but the block's gone. Or they would just not delete the block and submit their portfolio with all these instruction blocks all over it. Yeah. So the instructions <laughs> area, we wanted it to be um, easily accessible, but not have to show on the screen. Um, and by creating a space where it can be toggled on and off, you can open and close it, um, it actually meant that our assessors also knew what the nurse had been told. So it actually helped that everybody understand where the starting point was. Yeah. So if we take a look at the next screenshot. Um, so this is one of our domain pages. So these are the um, pages that uh, the nurses have to um, fill in um, for their competencies, for their nursing competencies. So for each competency area, um, they have to have their own self-assessment. They provide evidence against the criteria that are asked for by their nursing council, and they then need a second uh, person to provide evidence. So if you have a look at the, the screenshot here, 
at the beginning, it talks about the domain that the competencies belong to. And then you have the instructions below that where it says competency 1.1 accepts responsibility. That heading actually toggles open where they see further, how do I interpret this? What is it actually asking for? So we've given them some contextual instructions in there as well. They then write on their self-assessment and they share this portfolio with a pair. So Catalyst helped us to, to design a, a solution to allow the pair to be able to write on the page. Yes. Without <clears throat> seeing the, the person's self-assessment. And by putting them next to each other, we're allowing the nurse to see their evidence with their peers, their manager to read both and the assessor to read both together. Yeah. So it reduced our plagiarism issue. Um, we were having instances where peers- We're broke. just copying what was written in the self-assessment, but because um, one of the things about this peer block is that um, the peer cannot actually see anything that's been put on the page by the nurse, um, they can't just copy. <laughs> Yeah, well, also improving the process for the assessor because they were much faster because they could read the two together. Yeah, whereas previously they were on separate pages in the portfolio and the assessor would constantly have to flick between the two um, pages. The other thing <coughs> on that page is the sign off and verify. Ooh, what have you done? Went Too far. Um, the sign off and verify button in the top right. So um, we wanted a way for the nurse to know where they were up to in their portfolio and to manage the workflow for themselves so that they were in control of what was happening. And um, so the sign off meant for every single page, they could sign off that page is done. Um, and then uh, the verify is asking their manager to read the page and to verify the content. So we've added the verify to a, a number of steps to help make it clear that the uh, that the nurse has submitted the appropriate evidence. But um, looking forward, one of the things that we want to do with these sign off and verify is actually link them into an overview page that shows um, all the pages that have sign off and verification in the portfolio and will show in one screen, one screen which ones have been signed off and verified so that nurses don't have to go through their whole portfolio looking through at that little bit at the top. And uh, so if that was all about the portfolio itself and um, what the nurses can put in, what the peers can put in, and now kind of looking at the job that in particular Mary <coughs> and Joe, there's a lot of support involved, as you all know, when you have an e-portfolio initiative. And so also for the DHB, um, Einand and Gam uh, Gambino's quote, on support is also very apt and um, very applicable still, that the process of curating the connected collection, making meaning through reflection and thereby developing deeper, more intentional identities as learners requires thoughtful student action guided by well-informed faculty and staff and supported by a broad coalition of college stakeholders. And so let's take a look at what support looks like at the hospital. So um, in order to support our nurses in, in making these portfolios in a completely new space, um, we had to make sure that um, we had a range of templates, one for every single level of nursing portfolio that was available, and that the instructions all throughout each of the templates are very specific to the page and the level that they're at. Um, we made a range of videos that um, not only showed them every single task that they needed to do along the way so that they could um, follow along with those, but they were also specific to the, um, the person. So if, if it was a nurse, they have a range of videos. If it's a peer, they have a range of videos, manager, assessor. So they'd access these videos using the LMS. So we integrated quite closely with our LMS. Yes. We wanted to make sure that there was a close alignment because it's a place they're already familiar with. It's a safe place. They, they know how to log in. They know how to navigate to courses and find their learning. So we wanted to make use of the existing knowledge. And we put um, some short written guides on there as well in the form of FAQs and some evidential requirement guides. So what actually needs to go into your portfolio. Yep. Glossaries of terms used by the council, that sort of thing. And we made plenty of handouts for people so that um, those who prefer to have a hard copy um, 
to work from while they're working through their portfolio of instructions have that available to them. Yeah. And lots of comms. The communication plan <clears throat> for launch was quite extensive, making sure that they felt uh, uh, that they could find the support that they needed. They could come to a drop-in session. They could come to a, a, one, a 50 minute training session. Yes, and, and we, can, ran, yeah. we ran a lot of those um, in the first five weeks. Um, at times we were running 10 of those a day with two of us in um, one room each side by side, <clears throat> just going through. <laughs> so And going forward, there'll be um, continuing training sessions available as new staff join. Yeah. There were opportunities to talk about best practice and how your portfolio is improving uh, and how you'll be able to do better portfolios that uh, show your evidence more clearly. We also set up a that people could email in order to get one-on-one -on -one support um, either just via the email address or sometimes even um, with somebody going down and helping the nurse through. So you can probably already get that we were passionate uh, you need a passionate team to succeed um, and we found that uh, there was a high level of engagement and we uh, wanted to share with you what we found in our evaluation. <coughs> So if we look at how it was before and how it is now, it felt very assessment focused. Mm. It moved to a strongly uh, develop, um, development conversation space. Instead of nurses talking with their manager about uh, writing evidence about what they'd already done, they were starting to have conversations about developing their practice, becoming mm. better practitioners, taking opportunities to learn. Um, whereas before there was very minimal engagement um, uh, around the portfolio, except what was absolutely required. Um, now managers and, P and nurses are having um, more conversations around their portfolios. <clears throat> um, and before we had procrastination. So if you uh, did not submit your portfolio on time, the nursing council add you to the pool that could be pulled up for assessment. Uh, audit. for audit for mm. audit so um, we had a lot of nurses who would just wait and and see if they were pulled up in the audit um, <laughs> yeah. but now we've actually got nurses coming to training who are not due to do due to submit their portfolios till 2020 or 2021 so we've got people um, wanting to start early wanting to have a look at the system and um, excited about it so. yeah so this is something they do uh, every three years mm -hmm. and and we have a high proportion who are engaging it in the process every year and wanting to start recording now. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so uh, we noticed this, especially in the pilot group. Um, managers uh, were very, very keen um, because they got to do their uh, appraisals with um, one or two nurses and they were suddenly going, I want to do this with all my nurses now. Um, <laughs> but you have to evaluate first. <laughs> yeah. No, I want it now. So yeah, they were very keen managers wanting to shift to the online appraisal system immediately before we were even ready. <laughs> um, sessions were filling up in a single day. They were in such hot demand. Mm -hmm. People would turn up and ask, is, is there a space? Did anyone not come? And I can call someone else from my ward yeah. to join. So we have a waiting list for attending training. And um, every time we release more sessions, they fill up like that. Yep. Same day filled. Yep. So <clears throat> next we were going to share with you some of the quotes that came out of the evaluation. When we did the evaluation of our pilot, we uh, sat down with uh, people in focus groups. So we sat down with the nurses and the peers and the managers and the assessors individually in each group. Um, and as well as gave them an online form to submit written um, feedback. So when we looked at our criteria at the beginning when we were doing our scoping work, we saw um, looking back on those coming through in our evidence uh, from the evaluation that there was an improvement in all areas that we had requested. So we'd listed as process improvements, workflow improvements, time, the time that it took to complete their process was faster, access improvements because we were making all the information ex more accessible and privacy and confidentiality. We were making sure that we were looking after people's information and securing it in Mahara instead of being 
everywhere yeah. and print out and some USB sticks. USB sticks, so. yeah. So, yeah. So we saw improvements <laughs> everywhere. Um, we saw a lot of shift in people's perceptions. Yeah, they, they thought before going into it that it was going to be this really hard process and that they were going to have to learn all this new stuff. And while there is a little bit of that still going on, um, the general... Uh, consensus was that it was easier than what they thought it was going to be mm. and so they were quite happy with uh, moving <laughs> yeah um in particular the assessors when we mm. uh, because we integrated closely with our lms we were able to use a rubric so instead of an assessor filling in a multiple page document and having to write a lot of uh, um, evidence down they're able to just click on each line you just click to make it green Yep. Next row, click to make it green. And they could just save as they go. And so our assessors have been coming back. I had one earlier this week who said, oh, can I have four this week? Where the normal <laughs> is that we run months and months behind in our assessment. And somebody like with a paper portfolio, an assessor would pick up a paper portfolio and sometimes have it for weeks to months trying to assess it. And now we've got people going, I can assess these really quickly. Give me more. <laughs> Which is nice. So based on the feedback we um, gathered in our pilot, we improved our user guides and our face-to-face -face teaching. We refined the language we used in our mm. instructions. And then we said, that's it. We're ready. Let's go live. Launch. Yeah. Next. So I think we're up to where to next. <laughs> so um, we want to further integrate with the LMS. Yeah. Um, so we'd like to pull more information from our LMS, like our course completions across into Mahara. Yeah. Uh, we want to improve our reporting functionality so that uh, we understand better as a business where we're at. If we're looking at um, our workforce and trying to understand where the where the gaps are and where the um, where the areas that we can improve are, we need better reporting. So mm. we'll look at that next. Um, the progress block that I talked about earlier, which is about um, the sign off and verify and being able to see that all on one page. <clears throat> and um, we also want to look at um, how we can support staff in creating portfolios that don't just include a whole bunch of words, because sometimes that's not the best way that a nurse can communicate um, how she is or he is. Um, actually doing their job mm. um, so um, being able to include audio video etc but we also need to look at the privacy um, implications of exactly. those things <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <clears throat> there is more LMS work going on in other areas that we want to start uh, incorporating so that they can link the competency framework from the council into uh, what we offer in terms of development opportunities in our learning and development team um, we also want to make sure we, we continue to work closely with other DHBs. So throughout this whole process, we have shared everything that we have um, come up with, everything that, um, that we have um, had fed back to us with the other DHBs um, so that they there was a transparent process. And we want to make sure that we continue to do that and that we are always pulling in the same direction as mm. other DHBs. Um, we'd also like to work with the nursing council, but it's another, another story. Yeah. Uh, currently the appraisal is done in our LMS. Um, and this is one area we'd like to improve in terms of their privacy of their mm -hmm. data because they save it as a PDF and then upload, upload. it to mm -hmm. the portfolio. So we're going to work with Catalyst to look at ways we can improve the security of information there. Um, and the sign in process. <laughs> What have I got outside of this? Um, you currently sign in through to Mahara through the LMS, so um, that makes it a little bit tricky. So we'll talk to Catalyst about uh, ways we can improve how that how they sign in and, and the appraisals, which are on the LMS, not on the um, not on Mahara. So um, we want to improve, make some improvements there. Um, we want to make some improvements to calendar functions in our LMS as well, so that they get more visibility of the training opportunities against the criteria. And we want to roll this out to more than just nurses. Yeah. So we want to make sure that um, that's why we named it healthcare portfolio rather than nursing portfolio, so that um, it is there for all healthcare pr practitioners. And if now we are at the end of this, this part of the session, and if you have any questions for them, you're very welcome to kind of email them New Zealand is many, many hours in the future. Um, so your email will be read tomorrow, even if you send it today. And um, it's been fantastic working with 
um, Janine, Miriam, and Tabitha on this project because they're, as you can hear from them, very enthusiastic about the portfolio work and also wanting to make it easy for everybody involved. So not just for the nurses, but also for the assessors, for the manager, mm -hmm. and also the administrator who does not, uh, who now actually probably needs to them. Um, rather than lugging around to all these um, portfolio binders. And so it's, um, I find a great example of showcasing how portfolios don't just work in university, but can also be then continued um, into the place of work because students in New Zealand do start with portfolios, do start looking into competency portfolios alongside the registered nurse criteria already at university level. And so they can then take all their learnings um, all their portfolio into their place of work. And kind of things that we've been talking about here at the conference, do we have a break in there? What do students do after graduation? That is just exemplified here very nicely because there's just that continuity there that students can also see already during their degree, they know where they are going to and mm -hmm. what they can do in the future. Mm -hmm. Minutes left before oh. handing over um, to Pace University. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions?